you know, Brashard Smith has really come on strong the past couple of weeks. Where have you seen the most improvement and growth within his game over the course of this season? Yeah, I mean, Brashard's always been a special player, you know. Um, you guys saw sports of it last year. And, um, after X went down, uh, he's really stepped it up. So um, I think during the bye week is when he really – kind of started to really understand the entire offense as a whole and really started coming to his own and, and be that guy out there to to make plays for us. So um, he's been doing that for the last few weeks, and um, he's going to continue to do that for us. Go to Matt Shodell from Kane Sport. Matt? Hey there, Tyler. Um, so I was trying to count the amount of rece wide receivers that have actually started games for you this season. I think it's six. Um how, how does that affect you? Um, you know, I know every, everybody's got their own way of running routes and their own timing. Has that been something you've had to adjust to? We get reps with those guys in practice. They're, they're always rotating, always uh, getting reps with the one. So um, we always get an extra work with them too. So um, timing is really an issue. And um, I think the last two weeks has been really good with the timing and um, understanding uh, where I need them to be and where they, where they need to be too. So, um, it's not really an issue. Um, I mean, all those guys are making plays for us right now. So, um, yeah, they're all doing a great job. Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam? Hey, Tyler. Um, so, we heard a lot, you know, after the Middle Tennessee game um, about how you were working really hard in practice, having your best week in practice. And whatever you've been doing, it, it's working. You've been playing fantastically the last two weeks. What What are some of those things that you were doing maybe that you – that you changed or, or worked harder on that's led to you having so much success, you know, these past two games? I think it's just positivity and um, always staying up when things aren't, when things aren't going great, you know, throw a bad ball. i just got to stay positive about it and move on to the next thing and not worry about, Oh, that was a bad throw and, and soak on it. And the next one's a bad throw. So you just got to stay positive and move on to the next play. And um, no matter what happens, you just got to keep uh, moving forward. And that's the mentality I, um, Went with that that bye week and it just continued the last few weeks. Manny Navarro from the Athletic. Manny, hey Tyler, um, I was curious. You know, obviously you and Xavier are close. I saw he's not wearing the boot anymore on his foot. Have you guys already started playing catch again? And um, you know, just his spirits. You know, I know Coach mentioned he could be back in like two and a half weeks or whatever. Um, just curious, like you know, where his spirits are and, and how much you guys are kind of playing catch again. Yeah, I mean, he, he's wanting to be out there uh, right now. Um, we have to hold him back a little bit, um, trying to do stuff that he's not supposed to, which is him just want to be competitive, want to, want to be out there with us and wanting to win. So um, we have to throw the ball around a little bit. He can't um, really run right now. So he's, he's starting to get back into things and do, do all that. But, um, you know, yeah, he's, his uh, recovery is going well so far, and um, he's excited to get back on the field. Marcus Benjamin from Canes County. Marcus, go ahead for Tyler. Hi, Tyler. You clinched the game essentially with that uh, quarterback keeper run. Are you gaining some confidence with actually tucking the ball and, and running on plays? And also wanted to ask just about uh, Jakari Brown and, and just what you've seen from him in the quarterback run. You know, um, I think, uh, I mean, last year, I think I really got confidence around the ball and um, that continued throughout the season. Uh, I think a few runs just like that will kind of give me more confidence throughout the rest of the way. So um, just got to just run a little bit better. Um, obviously get down when I need to, but um, sometimes, you know, get a little more than I think I can. So, um, and then, yeah, Jakari is um, a great athlete. And you guys saw what he did. And, um, you know, it's pretty impressive going, to, going there as a freshman at, uh, Virginia Tech like that and, and doing what he did. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool to see. Got time for a few more for Tyler. We'll go to Susan Miller-Degnan from the Miami Herald. Susan? Hi, Tyler. Uh, Duke defense, can you talk about that a little bit? They're, they're very good uh, as far as turnover margin, you know, fumbles recovered. I think they lead the nation. How important is ball security and, and some stuff about their defense that you've noticed? Yeah, I mean, I think Coach Christopher showed us – uh, some of the stats of them, and uh, they're up there in, in all the stats in the ACC. So um, defense is really good, very sound in what they do, coach very well. Um, you know, it's not the same old Duke. It's a, this is a very good team. and um, uh, Four and three, should have beat North Carolina last week. And, um, you know, we we got to take them seriously. They're a good team, and uh, we're preparing very well for them. And 
Um, and we're ready for them. All right, got two more hands. We'll go to Manny and then Adam. That'll be it for Tyler. Manny, go ahead. Hey, Tyler. Um, I know you mentioned, I think, I forget which game it was, but you guys said, we're like, we're going to go back and play catch, like right after. I'm curious with, with these new guys, like Colby, for instance, who was basically with the scout team for a while, like how much extra work are you putting in with him? Um, and, and what is it like? I mean, do you guys just meet up by at your apartment? Do you go down the street, you know, on your own free time to play catch? Explain to us, you know, take us to the scene of how it is that you work on chemistry with, with a new guy like him. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, Kobe got here in the summer, so uh, got to know him a bit then. And uh, I mean, just after practice, after lifts, uh, you know, get the receivers to come, come throw. And um, obviously, on my campus, we'll, we'll hang out and chill and uh, do all that stuff together. So, um, but yeah, it's it's after practice and, and just getting our timing down, really getting to know each other and um, just talking about throwing and, and doing all that kind of stuff. All right, last question for Tyler comes from Adam Lichtenstein in the Sun Sentinel. Hey again. So, yeah, we just spoke to Colby a couple minutes ago. Um, obviously, him arriving, you know, super late in the offseason would have been tough for him to kind of adjust. Um, how have you seen him grow over the past, I guess, it's three or four months? And how much did, did you and Jake and the, and the receivers kind of help him learn the offense, you know, as quickly as possible? Yeah, so I remember Colby got here in sometime in July. Um, we were doing our summer workouts and, uh, you know, we have seven on seven. Uh, after after we do our little run workouts, whatever, and um, throw a go ball to, or I think it was Jakari threw a go ball to him. He was going with the third team at that that point, and went up and got the ball. And I was like, damn, he's got unbelievable ball, ball skills. And um, you know, I could I could I'm, I'm not surprised at all that he's doing this right now because he's been doing it since then and in practice and um, quiet kid, but he's hardworking and um, will always get the job done. So um, I'm I'm very impressed with him and, and the way he's coming along. Hey, Colby. Um, so Mario said on Saturday after the game that like, you know, you, you, like, you were almost like dropped out of a helicopter onto Green Tree to kind of start the start the season and stuff. Um, just what was that that process like for you and how difficult was it to kind of get up to speed so quickly? Uh, I mean, it's pretty difficult coming from a whole offense and a, just a different type of game speed. And I was at a junior college. So getting to that, the speed of the game in the ACC and just getting used to the players and how people move was pretty difficult, but it was a great job for my teammates and the whole team in general, just helping me move forward and just never let me take a step back. I guess how, to kind of follow up on that, how did the team do that? Were you, you know, you staying, staying up late studying plays with guys or like what, what did they do to kind of help you? With yeah, that? everything. Just a little text here, like, Hey, what do you got on this? What do you got on that? Just to help me out just to make sure I'm on top of my game. And just like during like, off-season conditioning, you know, having my bag, like, hey, stand up, like, you got this, you can get through this, like, this is going to be you. Go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny. Hey, Colby. Um, I'm curious, uh, have any former Hurricanes players, uh, you know, reached out to you after your, you know, kind of performance the last couple of weeks to give you words of encouragement or, or just to, you know, maybe give you pointers? And obviously you've got your, your own teammates and, and the coaching staff. And then the second part of, of the question is, you know, are there guys, you know, as far as NFL players that you study, you know, um, you know, in their, in their parts of their game that you try to take and, and sort of put into yours? Uh when it comes to NFL players, I really like looking at, like, T. Higgins and, uh, like, Julio Jones, those bigger body receivers that can move and get in and out of cuts. I try to uh, really influence my game after them. And when it comes to former players, uh, Mike Harley, he uh, he ended up texting me after the game and was like, just keep up the good work, man. You, you're a great player. Luke Cheney from All Hurricanes. Luke? Hey, what's up, Colby? So, <laughs> what are – so what's what would you say is the area of your game that has grown the most so far in your time in Miami? Uh, just getting used to the, the weather, I would say, is the, the most important thing. I mean, coming from right now in New York, it's around like 60 degrees, and now it's like 85 in Miami. So just getting used to the climate and all that, I feel like it's the biggest part of the game right now I'm uh, improved on. And then just, I mean, really in the football game, I mean – it's just it's so hard to not do good with Tyler Van Dyke back at quarterback putting the ball in the right spots. So I feel like he he really helped me improve anything, like getting out of cuts and all that. He just puts the ball in such a good spot. So 
And you no, know, just a quick follow up. I guess how hard were those initial practices with the the heat and everything? Uh, it was it was pretty exhausting. I mean, there was at times I was on people's shoulders and they were just like, "Hey, come on, I got you. Like, we're, I'm gonna carry you through this. Like, we're gonna be, we got your back. We got you." Go to Matt Shodell from Kane Sport, Matt. Oh, hey, Colby. Um, so I think you told me way back when you were still in junior college um, that Miami sort of came came at you thinking you were a 2023 recruit initially um, and then lo- learning you were going to be able to leave after one year. But, I, you know, I don't think I ever got clarity on how they sort of found out about you. Um, did you reach out to Miami? Did you sort of recruit Miami or like, you know, I don't know if they're constantly at Lackawanna looking at guys like do you have any idea how they found out about you initially and started recruiting you? Uh, I really don't know. They, uh, I heard one of my, uh, the old, my old OC, he texted me. He was like, Hey, would you be interested in, uh, the university of Miami? And I said, absolutely. And then probably like two hours later, I got a call from, uh, coach Cristobal and it was just from there, it was just on and running. All right. Last question for Colby. We'll go back to Manny Navarro. Hey, I guess my hand was still up by accident, but I'll, but I'll take the extra question for Colby. Colby, I'm curious, what's the fastest 40 time you've run that you know of? And, and has your speed sort of gotten better, you know, with time? Or how much do you work on that? Uh, I don't remember the last time I ran a 40, probably like 10th grade, like, like a 4.6, high 4.6. But, uh, yeah, we, we work on agility here, uh, just in and out of, like, getting out our stance. Like, every flex we do, like, bounds and stuff like that. To just work on getting us last twitch and driving our knees. Adam Lichtenstein had one real quick one for you as well, Kobe. Kobe. Hey, Kobe. Yeah, you mentioned your OC at, uh, at Lackawanna was the one who mentioned that Miami was interested. At, what's his name? Real quick. Uh, Coach Pardini. Pardini? Yes. All right. What's his first name? Uh, Josh. All right. Thank um, you. So congratulations on your honor, first of all. Um, you know, I was looking at Pro Football Focus, which, you know, some people count for a lot, some not so much, but you rank fourth in the nation um, for your grade this year. And I'm curious, can you sort of explain, um, you know, sort of what's, what, what you're doing really well, what you feel most comfortable about in this defense, what makes you stand out so much in Kevin Steele's defense? I think, so this is my third year in college football. So I think my, my, my knowledge in the game has improved, which has helped me a lot. And then Coach Steele just likes to put me in a good situation or in a situation that allowed me to be successful. So I think it's those two things right there. Go to Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam. Hey, Keen. Yeah, congrats on, on the ACC honors, the Walter Camp honors. It's awesome. Um, my question is, I guess, you know, looking at, looking at Duke's offense, you know, their offensive line seems pretty solid. Um, what have you seen from them, you know, while, while studying them on film? Well, I know they're a smart old line. Um, they're disciplined. They have allowed the least amount of sacks um, in the ACC. So we're just going to have to go out there, play violent, physical, and um, we just have to be on our A game in order to dominate. Go to Luke Cheney from All Hurricanes. Luke, go ahead for Akeem. Hey, what's up, Akeem? So, you know, three and a half sacks, obviously very impressive. What led to you having this type of performance? And then just out of curiosity, have you ever had that many sacks in a game before? I've never. That's my that's my career high in the game. Um, but um, I think what led to it was just great preparation as a whole defense. Um, shout out to my guys on the inside, Dell Jackson, LT. Um, they pushed that pocket and, and, have, and forced the quarterback to, to get out of there and, and uh, allowed me to just fall back and get some sacks, make some plays. But I think it was just preparation throughout the week, really, to help me out. Go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny. Hey, Akeem, congrats. I um, wanted to ask you specifically about, um, you know, film study. Corey uh, Flagg was saying how, you know, he'll study NFL guys on his own. Uh, I'm curious, do you do any of that yourself? Are you kind of a film junkie where you're studying other pass rushers? And is there anything that you've taken from guys that you've sort of implemented into your game to help you become better? Yes, I like to watch Aaron Donald on the inside. And like Cam Jordan on the outside, really. Um, Aaron Donald's just quickness that I love about him. And then Cam Jordan is he's a little he's a little bit of a bigger a bigger end. So um, that's why I like to watch him because I'm not I'm not your traditional like 250, 245 
college end, I'm a, I'm a little bit bigger, 275, so I like to watch him move. Go back to Adam. Hey again. So, um, yeah, I know, obviously, you know, you don't spend a ton of time working with uh, Tyler Van Dyke because you guys are obviously on different sides of the ball. But, you know, when you are around him, you know, either in like, you know, like 11 on 11s or in the locker room, have you seen him – I guess make any changes the last couple of weeks. He's obviously had a lot of success the last two weeks after starting the season kind of slow. Have you seen any changes from him in his demeanor and or the way he prepares or anything at all? Um, I don't think I have. I, Tyler's a leader. Um, I know for a fact, for personally, he is. So we'll always try to get things right. So um, regardless of how he started, the type he's the type of person that's going to work and try to be the best version of himself and try to encourage everybody around him. So he's pushing the offense and he's just – He's trying to be successful just like everybody else on the team. Got time for a couple more for Akeem. We'll go to Marcus Benjamin from Canes County. Marcus? Hi, Akeem. Just uh, wanted to ask about the rotation with the defensive line. Um, how do you feel like that helps you and the entire defensive line to perform uh, during the game? It helps to stay fresh, really. Um, I think D-line, I think it, like up front may be the most – um, tiring or like like the position that takes up the most energy, especially pass rushing. So having the ability to um, to rotate a ton of guys is a blessing and it helps all of us be successful. We got time for two more. We got two more hands up. So we'll go with Luke and then Manny and that'll be it for Akeem. Luke, go ahead. Hey again, Akeem. So you mentioned some of the you know good situations that Coach Steele has put you in this season. Can you just, I guess, talk a little bit more about what these situations are and, I guess, how you're best used as a pass rusher and as a defensive lineman? Yeah, so I guess on base downs, I'm usually on the outside. But when it comes to pass rush, he'll put me in the, on the inside, line me up against um, whatever guard they think I'll be most successful with. And um, at that point, it's just everything else in my hands. And it's just my job to execute and try to make a play. All right, last question for Akeem comes from Manny Navarro. Hey, Akeem, when you guys face mobile quarterbacks, and, and I know you face a lot of them this year, but a guy like Riley Leonard, uh, you know, Coach Steele talked about the challenge of sort of caging him in, not letting him, you know, don't don't push him too far up where you open up holes and he can escape and run. Can you speak to, to what that challenge is like and how it is that you and Leonard and all the other guys in the defensive line kind of work at that and, and communicate to make sure that you, you're doing a good job at that? Yeah, so we always watch um, we always watch this thing called rush lanes. Um, well, so we watch film on where the quarterback will, like, roll out the most. So it's all about really um, rush integrity. It's difficult on the, on the outside, really, to cage rush because you want sometimes you want to speed rush and you don't want to just go down the middle of the guy. So – and if – you do speed the power every play, and the old linemen are smart. They'll end up getting the hang of it and understanding how to block you. But um, at the end of the day, everybody just wants to do their job and try to get the make the whole defense successful. If we do our job and, and the guys in the back and do their job, um, should be dominant. We will be dominant. Hey, Corey, you're fourth nationally in tackles for loss per game. What do you look for pre-snap and, po and post-snap when diagnosing these plays? Um, I just look at my keys and uh, just do my job, do my coach tell me to do. And the guys up front, they do a hell of a job. Mesador, and Fari, and Darryl Jackson, they do a hell of a job of opening it up for me. And I just make the play when the play is when my, when it's there, you know. So it's nothing uh, crazy to it. Just make the play when the play is there. But it was Zuby Charles from Kane Sport. Zuby. Hey, Corey. So uh, yesterday, Coach Steele said, you know, that was the best performance from the linebacker group. Just want to get your thoughts on the game and your performance uh, as an individual. Um, I think um, we did a really good job as a, as a group. You know, the entire room, uh, you know, like, uh, that was the first game that we all uh, had a really great game together as a room. Uh, Wesley played well. Caleb played well. Keontre played well. Um, and uh, we did really good, man. We was communicating on the sideline. We was in sync. So uh, it wasn't no drop off at all. We were rotating. Um, we, we did really well. Go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny? 
Hey, Corey, congrats on the uh, win and, and the first half performance by you individually. You've had a great first half. Uh, curious, you know, you guys are going to face some running quarterbacks, and I know you've done a good job, you know, it feels like being, you know, caging him in as far as, you know, a front seven. But this this week, the challenge with Duke's quarterback and just what it's like, you know, having having to deal with a guy who's so fast with his, with his legs. Um, he's a he's, he's a great quarterback. He's a great player. Um, I've been studying. We've we've been studying him. Uh, he keeps his eyes downfield. Um, but I mean, we, we go against Jakar Brown every day. So um, I was just repping. I've been reps in with him, open space. So um, it's all about preparation, preparing for the for the moment, for the tackle, for the plays. Uh, and we do a great job preparing. Our coaches get us prepared. So uh, you got to make the play when the play is there. Go back to Azubi. Just wanted to get your thoughts, Corey, and just how Coach Charlie Strong has helped your game this year with, with him being involved with the linebackers. Yeah, he's helped my game a lot. My, my knowledge for the game has been has taken a, another uh, three steps, man. Uh, he's, he's helped me every day on what I can do with my eyes and how I can disguise things better. You know, he's seen a lot. He's he's been around a lot. You know, uh, so with Coach Still as well, they 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 tell me a lot. Tell me a lot of little gems. What I can do better. How to do this better. Do this better. You know. So I'm getting better every day. Now I'll go back to Manny. Hey, uh, Corey, I'm curious, does Coach Strong make you guys study, you know, NFL guys or any of his former guys, you know, in terms of helping you get ready and, and you know, improve? Or is it just your own film? What, in what kind of ways does he, you know, teach you and, and make you better? Um, I mean, uh, I, I study the game myself. I always study the game, you know, um, play the game. So there's it's no reason why you should study it. Um, you know, when I get a chance to watch Monday Night Football or, you know, Sunday Night Football, I'm just watching different guys and, you know, what, how they play blocks and how they play things. But, uh, you know, we mainly focus on ourselves. We don't really, I don't want to say have time to watch others, but, you know, we got to we gotta get better within ourselves first. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's always good to watch NFL tape because those guys are the best of the best. And, uh, you know, I do that in my little free time, you know, between classes and stuff when I get a chance. But, uh Coach Strong has really been focusing on us and getting, getting us better, getting us to the next step, getting us to that level.